targeted sampling means collecting samples from not from poor doing pigs, pigs that you know aren't the, your prime pigs. So targeted sampling is not a new concept, but it's become more legitimate. It's become more legitimate in the sense that the U European Food Safety Authority, which is kind of the, the, the grand poobahs on the European side, came out with two papers, one in, well, both in, in 2021, one on classical swine fever, one on African swine fever. And what they said was, do targeted sampling, much more efficient. Welcome to the Swine Health Black Belt Podcast, the latest swine health research digested for you. My name is Dr. Clayton Johnson. I'm the host of the podcast. Joining us in our illustrious podcast studios this week is Dr. Jeff Zimmerman. Dr. Zimmerman's with the team at Iowa State University. And uh, Jeff, if you would, I, I know you know quite a few folks in the industry, but just on a chance that maybe somebody hasn't worked with you in the past, would, why don't you start with an introduction for the audience? Sure. So I've been at Iowa State since 1990 primarily working on PERS virus research. Uh, we did some of the earliest work, for example, on semen shedding of PERS virus and those kind of things. And then kind of transitioned into more broader char characterization and more, more broader research. And in particular, these last probably five, eight years, I've been working a lot on, re on, uh, excuse me, on surveillance. How can we collect samples more efficiently? How can we detect our targets more efficiently? Uh, oral fluids came out of that research, for example, in 2005, it's been a while. So that's, that's been kind of the focus we've had. Stop disease in its tracks. Improve biosecurity compliance and reduce disease risk with Farm Health Guardian. Why choose Farm Health Guardian? Automate downtime and health status management for large systems. Get biosecurity breach alerts for trucks and trailers. Prevent unauthorized access to your barns with controlled entry technology. And speed up disease investigations with automated traceback reports. Do biosecurity differently with Farm Health Guardian. Well, and uh, thanks to, to work you've done, um, you know, you've worked with lots of amazing students through the years. I got a chance to work with uh, John Prickett, um, you know, and, and you guys tag team together to work on some population surveillance things, you know, oral fluids and stuff like that. And Jeff, you guys have really pioneered population based samples that have helped us in the field kind of take our sampling methodology beyond maybe the, the regulatory way of monitoring and things like that. Um, and you're here today, Jeff, I think, to talk to us about the, the U.S. SHIP program and a surveillance program related to that, active participatory surveillance, which is a mouthful to say. Um, but talk to us a little bit about that. What is that program? How does it help SHIP? All that sort of stuff. So, in, you know, you open a thing talking about how the previous work we've done in surveillance with John Prick and with others. Uh, and so we've been looking at these sample types over time and how we can do get better data more easily and at a lower cost. Well, then the next step up for that is working with U.S. SHIP, uh, particularly in their function to uh, detect African swine fever and classical swine fever outside of control areas. Uh, how can we do that? And the, the past model has been you sample enough, you test enough animals in a herd to prove the herd negative. And so the whole concept of proving herds negative, especially as our herds have gotten so much bigger, is becoming financially prohibitive. Yeah, a lot of testing. <laughs> so, yeah, too much testing. Uh, too, many too many samples, animals to sample, and too much cost in running a test. And so is there a better mousetrap? Can we invent a better, a better mousetrap? And that was what we tried to do with this active participatory surveillance. So it's active in the sense that we are collecting samples. We are going to collect samples and herds, but we're not going to collect them randomly. If you look at all our past stuff, especially like with Saudi Arabia's eradication program, it's all random sampling. Well, random sampling is great if you want to estimate some parameter within a herd. But for detection, it's inefficient because you're collecting too many negative animals. Yep. So can we do it more efficiently? And, and targeted sampling uh, has come out. Targeted sampling is not new. Targeted sampling means collecting samples from not from poor doing pigs, pigs that you know aren't the, your prime pigs. So targeted sampling is not a new concept, but it's become more legitimate. It's become more legitimate in the sense that the U European Food Safety Authority, which is kind of the, the, the grand poobahs on the European side, came out with two papers, one in, well, both in, tw in 2021, 
one on classical swine fever, one on African swine fever. And what they said was, do targeted sampling, much more efficient. Mm -hmm. Well, that's because you're, you're collecting good candidates. You're collecting samples from good candidates. So your testing is likely to be more, more efficient mm -hmm. and cost cheaper. So the active participatory surveillance is based on actively collecting samples, not waiting for something bad to happen, but you collect the samples from poor doing pigs. Mm -hmm. Sampling and testing is really important because what we've seen over time is that if you wait for clinical signs, it's going to be too late. So, for example, African swine fever, everybody expects African swine fever to come in and announce itself. Pigs are going to be dying left and right, and it's not going to happen. Likewise, with classical swine fever, these low virulent strains that are circulating now are going to look like PERS. They're going to look like something else, and we're going to miss it. So it's got to be active sampling and testing. The testing happens in the NALM labs. We have around 50 NALM labs a day. The NALM labs were established after 9-11 specifically for detection of foreign animal diseases. So we've got this system already in place, this testing, laboratory testing system already in place. So that's the active part. So participatory, what does participatory mean? Participatory means that the producers working in collaboration with their herd vets are the ones collecting the samples. There's no, nobody's going to show up in a truck on your place to collect samples. Producers are collecting samples. What that means is we have to have some knowledge base, but at the same time, the samples we're using are the ones that are easy to collect. Oral swabs, blood swabs, like Darman Reich showed us how to do a long time ago, or oral fluids. And so we get these easily collected samples. Uh, we are, when you do swabs, we're going to pull them in, in sets of five. So if we say what, what U.S. SHIP is saying is collect 10 samples on your farm, but pull them by five. So you got two samples. You have two samples to test. Pretty cheap. So participatory, the people are collecting the samples on their farms. They're pooling by fives and they're submitting to the non labs. And then the la non labs are already in place. They already know how to do the testing and they're hooked up electronically so they can they can assimilate, they can, they can uh, put all these data together to look at a regional level if we are okay or not okay. So, and then the surveillance part, really what we're talking about here is surveillance outside of control regions. So the USA already has plans. What happens if they find that first positive herd, whether it's African swine fever or classical swine fever, and they have, they have their plan. But the rest of the company, country, excuse me, the rest of the country needs to continue business. So this process would make sure that we can continue business outside of control areas. And how, how do we do that? So we do that by we have, we have the sampling and testing process, but U.S. SHIP also is engaging animal health authorities at the state and the federal level. So those animal health authorities at the state level are going to decide if your pigs can come into a state, because we move a lot of pigs between states. So by engaging all this, this whole sector, producers, packers, uh, animal health authorities, we can put together a plan so that when something bad happens, when something bad happens, we have a good way to continue doing business. Likewise, because, because just like the NPIP, the National Poultry Improvement Plan, U.S. SHIP is a bona fide, bona fide government industry, uh, agency, and so our trade partners can understand this is this is partly a bona fide project under the auspices, auspices of the government, mm -hmm. so they can trust us. Yep. So, it's a pathway to regionalization during an outbreak. Exactly, exactly right. So the whole thing is collecting a few samples from lots of herds, testing them, and putting the data together to assure that these regions are, are, are negative. So this whole plan is much different than we've done in the past. It's not proving herds one by one are negative, which is almost impossible anyway. So the, the question we, we raised was, could this even work? And so... Uh, Dr. Giovanni uh, Trevisan published a paper uh, about a year ago, I suppose, uh, looking at uh, how sensitive would this system be? At what, at what level are we going to start detecting positives? And in part, it is driven largely by, by, by participation. We need lots of people participating. 
But if you can get, basically, if you can get 40% of producers or more participating, it turns out to be extremely sensitive. You can, you could, uh, we did, a, did this pilot project. We, the, the pilot project in, included uh, 17,521 production sites in eight Midwestern states. And it turns out that if there were 20 or 20 positive herds in that, among those 17,521, the probability of detection was about 95%. So a few samples, lots of herds, lots of participation. Nobody, it doesn't cost anybody too much, but it contributes to the financial well-being of everybody. Is it simple enough, Jeff, that uh, we don't really need to practice it? We need to have a plan. We need to have a definition of the sampling strategy, but we can wait until there is a known um, incursion of a new pathogen that we want to test. Uh, or is it something we need to practice with some pathogens, let's say PERS, PED, that are already here in the U.S.? Practice is always good. <laughs> that's how you get better, and that's how you figure out. By the kinks. Yeah. <laughs> so one thing about U.S. SHIP is U.S. SHIP, the whole philosophy is – we reserve the right to do things better. We reserve the right to learn and improve. And so we've got this plan. It, it certainly would be good to test it, at least on a limited basis, and see if, can we make it better? Can we make it more efficient? Can we make it cheaper? You mentioned the cost piece, um, Jeff, and I'm sure that's something that producers and veterinarians are going to be curious on. Um, would this be a diagnostics that are funded through the ship funding, or would producers pay for this for their farms independently, or, do, or we don't know yet? Yeah, that part, that those details need to be worked out. We did look at the economics, and it depends on which kind of samples you, you're going to collect, because you can collect oral fluids. That's got a certain cost, and you, or you can collect blood swabs or oral swabs. So each one has a different cost because you need different equipment. Uh, there are different labor uh, issues to deal with. But essentially, the, the real big driver is uh, the sample type, oral fluids being one of the cheap ones, and the test type. So PCRs are more expensive than, than antibody assays. It's the, our estimates came up with about a one and a half cents per pig in a region to three cents per pig in a region, especially depending on whether you use antibody-based testing or, or nucleic acid-based testing, PCRs. Uh, you can say, well, why are we looking at antibodies? Because they take too long. But if in, in fact, if you look at the, the, these pathogens, in uh, certainly by 10 days, uh, but if you want to wait even 12 days, antibodies are, are readily detectable. We have good assays. They've been well, very well developed. Um, and the likelihood that you're going to, people say, well, that's too late, but the likelihood that you're going to sample a day or two after one of these things gets into your, into your herd. And get the right pigs. pigs. <laughs> so if you look at your, your monthly schedule, you, you know, you could be anywhere in, in that, uh, anybody, or excuse me, that anybody on Tajani or the, or the infection stage. So anybody assays, because they pr perform okay. Uh, I mean, because they're much cheaper, should be considered. Of course, PCRs are probably going to be the first go-to. But for the long haul, uh, producers should consider, or the, the people who are driving U.S. ships should consider antibody assays as well. Salmonella presents significant challenges to pig health and performance and poses food safety risks to humans. As the first and only vaccine offering live attenuated strains of both Salmonella cholera suis and Typhimurium, Enterosol Salmonella TC from Boringer Ingelheim protects pigs against both serotypes with a single oral dose. Talk to your Boringer Ingelheim representative to learn more. It's excellent. Jeff, if I'm a, I'm a producer out there and I'm buying what you're selling, that you know I should be involved in this, um, whether we're practicing with pathogens that are already here or certainly just to maintain business continuity if we do have an incursion, what's my trigger as a producer to know I should participate? How am I going to know that my farm should be sampling and what to take and that sort of stuff? Well, at this point in time, there is no sampling and there's no testing. So now this is, this is peacetime, peacetime. But it is a good time to be involved, to get involved in U.S. ship. So, so U.S. ship is, is producers, is uh, animal health authorities, it's packers. So it's the whole industry coming together to talk about how we can how we can create that better mousetrap, how we can protect ourselves and promote our our financial well being. And so, if you're a producer, you definitely should be involved in U.S. ship, whatever whatever size of of uh, 
production you have. Uh, you can you can find out more about about U.S. Ship by going to the U.S. Ship website. Just Google U.S. Ship and you'll find the website. It gives you a lot more information, and there is a way to sign up on that website. I really strongly encourage you to, to find out more, look into it. Uh, the House of Delegates meeting, which is where these decisions get get made, uh, where the actually the questions get get debated, and the decisions get made, will happen this September. Yeah, well, I appreciate all the work that you, Giovanni, Tyler, Roger, et cetera, and the team at SHIP are doing. Um, you mentioned it's peacetime, and there's no better time to, to plan for our, our challenges than during peacetime. And you guys have put a lot of work into this, a lot of thought into this. And to any producers that are out there on the fence, I would encourage them to do just what you said. Find SHIP on the website, sign up, become a delegate, have a voice in the meetings. Um, you know, these are checkoff dollars uh, and others that are they're being spent, um, you know, come and, and represent what you want to see done and, and be an active participant. Really appreciate you coming on and sharing all that with our audience, Jeff. Thank you, Clayton. Well, uh, to the audience, thank you for being a part of this. If you haven't checked out our website, please do so at swinehealthblackbelt.com. Check out our previous episodes. Uh, they're, they're all maybe not just as good as the one Jeff just did, but they're all pretty good. Uh, for Dr. Jeff Zimmerman, I'm Dr. Clayton Johnson. It's been our pleasure to spend some time with you, and we hope we have you have a great rest of your day.